There you go. We're almost there, baby. Okay. Hi guys, all right, so we have an aluminum radiator. So now that we finished with the steering rack, we are finally able to install our radiator and finish the front end of the engine bay. I was holding on to that until everything at the bottom of the engine bay is finished because it was easier to do it this way without the rad, but now we can install our new rad. So this is the new radiator that we bought and Tan, tan, tan. It has the extension as the original radiator. I was surprised that they still make those. What it doesn't have is a hole for the manual crank, but that doesn't really matter. So if you ask me, it looks pretty and it is uh, meant for TR2 and 3 and the early TR4s that had this extension here. I could buy also the one without the extension, but this one looked pretty cool because it's gonna look more original, <laughs> let's say. So let me take the old one too and let's compare them. All right. <sighs> oh, this one still has coolant in it. So yeah, it's pretty much the same size and everything. This one has also a drain plug, so we're not gonna use this one. Everything looks the same even has the ears here to mount the two rods that hold it in place. So yeah, hopefully it's gonna fit the same way. But anyways, let me put this down now. Before we install it in the engine bay though, we're gonna do something else. We're gonna install an electric fan as well. We're gonna keep the mechanical fan and we're gonna put this one as a pusher and we're gonna use it only as a spare. So it should have its own thermostat to turn it on and off. But I'm also gonna install a bypass switch so you can turn it manually if you want to. So we're gonna do that a little bit later. First, I wanted to test fit it to see if it fits well. So we're gonna flip this upside down. Oh yeah, perfect. So as you can see here, it can be mounted at different heights. So that was my idea. I want to put the radiator in the engine bay. First of all, I want to make sure that it fits the ears and everything. And once it's in the engine bay, we're gonna see what is the best position of this fan, height-wise. So it ends up right behind the grill. Okay. I don't have the mechanical fan yet. Maybe I should put it and test it with it. Because, wow, that's close. That's actually really close. How is this gonna work? I see, they have the holes in the wrong way. So, when I put the old one, oh, come on, started peeing. Like how much fluid is in it? So when the old one is in place here, there's just enough to put my fingers there. I can't measure it with anything, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna use my grandmother's way of measuring. So my fingers need to fit there. The thing is, this radiator, if you see here, has two holes here on the mounting bracket. But this one only has the rear one, and the one that we need actually is the one in the front. So we're gonna have to drill new holes, which is fine. So that's perfect. In this case, the fan, as expected, the best place for it is as high as possible in order to be right against the grill here. So we can take it out now. And before we forget, we can install our brand new 
fan blade. Come on. What kind of a blade are you if you can't cut plastic? All right, so here's the old fan and this is the reason why we are changing it. And it's a pretty heavy piece, you know? And I bought new tab washers. I don't think there were tab washers on here on this blade. But uh, anyways, there must be tab washers. There's also this locking plate to hold the bolt. The bolt that we torqued in the last episode, this plate is here to hold it so it doesn't come off. And then we have the tab washers and four bolts, of course. But what I didn't buy was the bushings. There's metal sleeves inside and rubber bushings that I didn't buy. So let's see if these are gonna survive. First I was afraid, I was petrified. Without you by my side. I will survive. <laughs> now we stuck the we stuck the socket there now. So let's see. I believe these should be separate bushings. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Okay. They will survive. And I can never use another fan in my life. <laughs> yeah. Too much time with only rusty around me, guys. Too much time. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I cleaned up the hardware a little bit. On this side with the rivets, I'm gonna put the part of the bushings that were with washers. Okay, and then on the other side we're gonna put this. This rubber is surprisingly pliable still. So, okay, let's flip this upside down now. Here we have the washers, they're not gonna stay. That's how it goes, and then we have this plate. So let's start assembling it in the car now. Okay. So these ho these holes are not in a square. I, I guess you noticed already. They're not in a square, they are in rectangle. So it matters how you put them. I'm gonna pre-bend these corners a little bit. Very little but it, it's, it makes it easier for later to lift them up. So first a tab washer, the locking plate. Okay, the tab washer is in the wrong. <laughs> tab washer needs to be like that actually. So tab washer, locking plate and another washer. And let's line it up here. Okay, the locking plate now. We lock we located the locking plate even. So that tab washer comes here. So that's another tab washer. Let's put the one underneath. I hope you can see. It's tricky to put the washers behind. Okay, I think that started. Uh oh, I have the tab washers wrong. Ah, <sighs> Elin, Elin. So the tab washers go across the short two holes. Okay, one side is in. Now we have to move this one as well. And now the last one. Put the washer behind. Okay. Just to confirm that the locking plate is around the hex of the, the big boat there. Now here I'm gonna use the torque wrench because I want them to be tightened equally. The spec is 16 foot-pounds. Wow, it's tight. Ok, 
Okay, it's 16 to 18 actually, but I'm doing 16. And now here you can see why I pre-bend a little bit the corners because now it makes it pretty easy for me to bend the tub washers. All right, let's deal with the radiator now. So we drilled the holes, now let's install the fan. And the fan should go, like we said, as high as possible, almost to the top. And that's for two reasons. One is because it's going to be right behind the grill. And second, because the radiator is hotter at the top because the heat rises, right? So that's how it should be. And it comes with this mounting kit. The fan but in the instructions it doesn't give you instructions about the mounting so let's see what we have here to be honest I mounted multiple of these but I just buy a separate fan and I do my own wiring and I mount them with just zip ties I use two zip ties I just fish one through and on the other side I put another zip tie and then I cut both but this one comes as a kid so Let's see what we have in the kit. So we have a pad, a spring, so that's the clip. So I guess this should go on the other side. Then here we should have the pad on this side, and then the spring, and then this clip. Okay, this means that we have to fish <laughs> all the zip ties first from this side and then transfer them on the other. Okay, so here now we need to have the pad. And here we said spring. What point does this spring have on this side? Maybe the spring goes behind? No. So they give you instructions in different languages, but they don't give you instructions about the mounting. So it has operation, contents, installation, C chart A. Chart A, chart A is about the temperature probe, but nothing about the mounting. So temperature probe, okay, fan mounting hardware. For fan supply with separate mounting brackets, remover. Slide the small end of the conical springs into the mounting rods. Okay, there's a little bit of instructions here. And I think what they tell you to do is to do the exact same thing what I'm just doing here. Except they want you to do actually this. That's how they want you to do it. And put this on the other side. Okay. Well, that's it. Now we can mount it in the car. All right, so it has more than enough room here for the blade. I was a little bit concerned, to be honest, after I ordered it, I realized that actually we're changing the generator to alternator. And I was thinking, well, maybe something is gonna interfere there now, but actually it fits perfectly. Nothing is interfering. So it is original. So yeah, that's great. So now we have to install these rods that I painted. They have to go from this ear to that ear over there. Ear or ear from this ear to that ear. <laughs> I, I can never make the difference in pronunciation of ear, the one that you hear with, and the year 2023, for example. For me, it's the same pronunciation, but my girlfriend keeps telling me that there's a difference. I don't know where that is, so for me, it's ear for both of them. All right, so I cleaned the shroud a little bit with, the, with paint thinner. Well, let's see what it's gonna look like when it dries. I was thinking just to dust it on top with black paint, like spray paint, but it's not gonna hold anything because it is, uh, it was covered in oil, 
but I think if it stays like that when it dries, it's going to be perfect actually. But let's see. In the meantime, I also installed all the hoses on the radiator, the top one, the bottom one even down there. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here, but I installed actually the petcock from the old radiator because that's what was there. Just a plastic plug with an O-ring, which I don't really trust. I tried to tighten it and I had it as tight as possible and it, it didn't even compress the O-ring. So I love the radiator, it's beautiful, but that plug, like if there was no O-ring on it, I was gonna make a suggestion that this is only for transportation reasons and stuff like that, but why would they put an O-ring there? So they actually meant to have it there. Um, anyways, what else did I do here? I put a zip tie here and I held this uh, wiring. I told that I was gonna run it this way because I'm used to TR6, I guess, where most of the wiring is on this side, but uh, it is actually here where we're gonna run it. So I run the wire this way now, put the zip tie here so we don't trip it and it goes to together with the other wiring so we can put the shroud now here on top and later we can take care of these wires. I also put these rods that hold the radiator, the top end, so now it is nice and solid. Oh my god, greasy fingers, I have to wipe it at the end. I'm not really sure where the expansion bottle should be, we have a brand new one, maybe now is the time to install it before the shroud somewhere here in this area. Let me go and look up where it needs to be because there wasn't one. On this car there wasn't a bottom. When you think about it, the bracket is pretty well self-explanatory. I believe it goes to the mount of the radiator on, or maybe on the second hole on the mount of the radiator, the one that we didn't use. So we bought everything here that we need for this bottle because we didn't have one, like I said, including even the bolt and the nut. We have even the little grommet that goes in, ho in the hole inside the cup. So let me see how this is gonna mount. Okay, I put temporarily the shroud here to see where it goes and it turns out that I can't put the bracket all the way down there. No, it's just not working. So I think, I don't know if that's how it goes, but that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna straighten this bracket here and I'm gonna mount it right here. So it might not be original, but that's how it's gonna be. Right here, I just took out the grommet and it looks like it is too small for here. You see it, it has a lot of play and it's easy to push it out. Also the hose, the hose looks like it's not gonna go through this grommet. But what if the hose is inside the grommet already and then we put it on the cup? Hmm? But it looks like it's really small. No, it's not. Let me show you a trick. Don't tell anyone. There you go. This is crazy. So this cup, even though it's so expensive, doesn't hold. If you over tighten it, it goes over, right? Look at that. It just comes off on its own. I have the feeling that this end of the bottle hits the cup before it even the threads even start. So, so I think we should cut this bottle a little bit. What do you think? It's not gonna make it worse. <laughs> That's not holding anything. All right, I already made it dirty. 
Let me cut my thumb now in camera. That's better. So it looks like the manufacturer of these bottles didn't finish their job. They were supposed to trim it. Okay. I don't think it needs anything to hold it. And in the meantime, I sprayed this a little bit with uh, truck bed liner. I believe it's gonna hold. It's much better than uh, what it was, right? Oh, and by the way, guess what I have? New lights for my shop. <laughs> if you follow the channel, you know that my old ones started going off one by one. Well, I have replacements now. There you go. The engine bay is mostly assembled. You know what? I'm going to have to clean this <laughs> a little bit because now it's the only dirty part here. I even wiped here a little bit. The only thing that bothers me, like bugs me a lot, is this part here, but there's nothing I can do about it unless I run a screw here into the radiator. <laughs> nope, not doing that. But other than that, it looks great, eh? Hey, eh? Canadian. <laughs> so, it's mostly assembled, like I said. On this side, we only need to add the carb cleaners later when we adjust carbs and everything. And the hose that goes from the valve cover into the two air cleaners. I need to install a plug here. And that's it for this side. And then on this side, we have a little bit more assembling. I still have to put the oil filter. After we prime the old system, we're gonna install the barrel here for the tachometer and install the cable. We need to install our distributor, hook up the vacuum line. We're gonna straighten it a little bit and we're gonna take care of it to make it look nicer. And the wires here, and that's it. Then we're gonna be able to start it. So I'm gonna abandon the engine bay for a while because before we start the engine, I want to hook up the drive shaft, but to hook up the drive shaft, I first want to take it out, take care of the differential. Look how I'm pointing at the differential. It's somewhere under there. <laughs> so I need to uh, change the seal on the front of the differential and the gasket. So we're gonna service the differential. Then we're gonna put the drive shaft back. We're gonna check the U-joints while it's out. And once it's in, we're gonna hook it up to the transmission and then I want to go underneath and change the whole entire exhaust system. We have a new exhaust in one of these boxes, a uh, stainless steel exhaust, so we want to change that. And only then we're going to come back to the engine bay and finish what we need to finish in order to start the engine. I don't want to start it without the exhaust. And right now we have the downpipe here removed completely. So yeah, I'm gonna get under the car. Maybe I'm gonna remove the exhaust completely and we're gonna service a little bit the differential. I don't know if I'm gonna show you that because it's under the car. Eh, maybe I might show you a little bit. All right, so the exhaust is out completely and now I started removing the drive shaft from here already. So one bolt is out, but I just wanted to show you a before picture. So you see how much oil there is everywhere and it's definitely from here from the front and we're gonna also change this gasket and we'll see if we can do also since we're gonna take the cover out we might even add a plug here for draining the oil because Triumph didn't bother installing a drain plug they expect you only to top up your oil but never drain the old one so you don't even change it <laughs> anyway just wanted to show you a before condition okay the drive shaft is out and since we're here let's check the u-joints and this one looks pretty good moves nicely 
no play anywhere. So if the other one was like this, I would have just greased them and forgot about them. But look at this one. So this one also doesn't have any play in any direction, so it's good. But look, it has movement this way, but absolutely no movement this way. That's all the movement it has in this direction. It even makes noise at the end. So this one needs to be replaced, and since we're going to be replacing this one, we should replace the other one as well. We're going to check this as well. This one is moving, but we're going to open it, clean it, and then grease it with the grease nipple. So I have to see if I have new joints because I recently installed all the ones that I had on stock. I installed them on somebody's car. I think I had six. So we will see. I might have some more. Okay, so the cover is off. So the cover is off and as you can see here, there's no gasket. And as you can see here, there's no gasket either. I've been advised here by Chef Tash to actually order two gaskets. So I ordered two. Anyways, we're gonna let it drain now and we're gonna go take the flange off from the front of the diff and try to change the seal there. So the oil seal is out. I'm sorry I didn't show it to you, but I used my favorite method now. Run a screw inside and use one of these hammers. What do you want? Huh? What do you want? What do you want? Ah, whoa! Help! 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 <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, that's the method that I used. And now we have the new one here, part number 520090. We're gonna install this and we're gonna start assembling. The new seal is in. All right, it's the next day and I just came to the garage and it's still cold. I just turned the heater on and it's gonna take a while to warm up. So I don't feel like going under the car to deal with the differential. So let's replace the U-joints on the drive shaft. So to do that, I'm, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take it apart from here. It's gonna be easier to deal with just just this part instead of the whole shaft, right? We have to take it apart and clean it inside and re-grease it anyway, so we can do that as well. So we can just do it now. Yeah. Okay, so this we have to undo here. Before we take it apart though, I'm gonna take a note here. A little bit of brake clean. I want to make a mark so we can assemble it the same way after. I think this matters about the balance. And these here are weights for balancing, you see, here and here. So we're going to assemble it the same way. Now we can take it apart and I'm going to go and clean it and then we're going to go and replace the U-joints. Alright, so I cleaned them up a little bit as far as I could and <coughs> what I noticed here is where is it that the grease nipple here is missing and that's the reason why this failed water went in and washed out the grease I guess and it's just bad anyway so let's start changing them we have here two new U joints So they come with the four circlips and the grease nipple. So what's important here is to remove the grease nipple before you start taking it apart, otherwise you can't take it out. And when you're installing it, of course, the same way, you install the grease nipple last, after everything is assembled. All right. <coughs> so first we have to remove all the circlips and to be honest, that's probably the hardest part of the whole thing, at least for me, because my circlip pliers are horrible. I need to buy new ones anyway. And that's one. And the other one is to remove the actual U-joint out because it's easier to assemble it than to take it out. But we're going to get there.
I assume that if you have a better pair of circle pliers, you're not going to struggle like I do. Come on. Yep, that happens. So it happened to me before that I broke both sides and then guess how easy it was to remove it really hard. Like this, you see? I broke both sides. Well, at least this one is almost out, so... Anyways, there's, I don't think there's a good advice that I can give you here with this. Maybe the best advice I can give you about this is buy a good pair of pliers. Let me struggle with the rest of them and then we're going to go and disassemble that. Well, what happened was I removed two and the third and the fourth were like really seized inside. And on the other side I removed it already, but what happened was I broke both ends like this and I wasn't able to grab anywhere anymore. So it is the same here now. You see both ends are broken and how do, it, how do you take this out? If it was less than a half circle, maybe you can do something, but when it is three quarters of a circle, how do you remove it? So I came up with a solution on the other side, so let's see if it is going to work here. The problem is that it is seized over here. So this is where it's broken, right here and here. But it's seized everywhere here. So first what we have to do is we have to try to make it spin. In the worst case scenario, we can apply heat, but I'm going to try without for as a beginning. As long as we make it spin, We're going to be fine after. Okay, let's heat it up. Okay, now it is apparently, it is spinning. Okay, so, all right, now we can drill a very, very small hole somewhere here. There you go. Okay, that works too. My idea wasn't this. My idea was the hole to be closer so I can rip this and through here just lift the end. But that worked as well. So that's how it worked on the other side. Let me show you. See on this side I was able to, to make the hole closer to the edge here and I literally ripped the hole with, with this tool like this and I was able to lift the end. So it's a little hole, it won't affect anything here too. So let's go take this out now. Okay, let's see if this is gonna give us troubles now. Normally it gives me troubles because what happens is, you will see now, when we start pushing out, we need to pull these cups out. That's the idea, all four cups need to come out but the only way to pull them out is actually to push them. So we need to push on this side in order to pull out this one. However, before this one comes out completely, we hit the end here. The cross piece inside hits the end of the yoke and, and then this cup can't come out. Then I go on the vise and try to remove it completely from there, but sometimes that doesn't work either, but let's see. So, of course, this socket underneath needs to be big enough so the cup can go inside. 
make sure that it is aligned on all sides. There you go. So now it goes down, but let's see if it's going to hit the end before the cap comes out. Sometimes I'm lucky and it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you see this cup comes out this much. So now let's go on the vise and try to pull this out. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it doesn't work. So sometimes I can just shake it like that and it comes out. Looks like this one has been there for 60 years. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So then the other option is to hammer it out, but again, it doesn't work every time. Well, this time it worked and it falls apart right away. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we still have to push this cup the other way, which is easier. We can't take it out like that, you see? We don't have the angle, but it's fine. Now we can push this one back. We just need to align it back with the hole and put the socket this time the other way around maybe. So now we should be able to take it out as long as we can take out our socket from here. <laughs> yep. So now if we push it all the way down here on this side, come on or one of the sides, the other one should come out like this. Come on, a little bit more. There you go. All right. And then we have to do the whole procedure one more time here. So let's see how this one is going to work. So here you can see it better how these two arms hit the end and that's what creates the troubles. but our cup is still not out. I had one of these so stubborn that I had to actually take the angle grinder and cut this and push everything back to the other side. But let's see if this one is gonna come out easy like the other one. Oh yeah. Okay, we got pretty lucky here. Installing the new one though, should be much easier. Usually it is. There's one key moment that I'm always worried about. Never had issues, but it's always bugging me. And I'll show you what that is. So first of all, we're gonna put one of these cups all the way in until it's flush with the surface here. So it's usually pretty easy to go in. If it starts creating resistance, then I don't push too hard because I can bend the yoke easily. But usually they go easy. Like you see how easy it goes. So now we have to put our middle piece, our cross piece inside, I don't know what the name is. And it goes in. And now we can put our other one. And that's the key moment where we have to press this one in, but make sure that it goes straight into the, this other piece. You know what I mean? So as I'm pushing it in, I'm constantly trying to see if I create pressure here. If I can make it fit in, in both at the same time, that's great. So it can guide it like this. Okay. So now both ends are in. Now we have to push this one past the groove for the circlip. Not much, but we have to make sure that it is past the groove so we can install the circlip. Now, because the other cap is not all the way in, there's lots of room here for this one. So I'm now I'm gonna go and install the circlip here. Now, this type of circlips is much easier to remove and install. There you go. 
know, so this one is in place. So you see how much more we put it in, push it in, but now we're gonna push everything back from this side. Okay, once we feel resistance, this means that we hit the circlip. We can push too hard, right? Now we can put the other circlip here. Okay, so both circlips are in on this piece, so now let's do the other one. I'm gonna take the two cups from here. So both your joints are replaced and now we can install our grease fittings. Don't over torque them because they snap easy and that's it. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease here just to assemble them but then through this fitting we're gonna grease this assembly completely. Of course we're gonna find our marks now so that's one, and that's the other here. So that's how they will go. That's it. Alright, so the drive shaft is installed, this is a new seal here, the rear end of the differential is still open, but, and before we close it, I'm gonna try to do something here, you know how Triumph don't install drain plugs on the differentials for whatever reason, they don't think that the oil needs to be changed, but we can install our own drain plug, at least we can try, here on this flat, that's where normally it would go, I guess, but but they don't install it. So this is pretty thick area here. And on the other side, let me take it to the other side. And there's room right here. So now that it's open, we can install it because otherwise all the shavings are going to end up inside. So I recently bought this set and I've never used it so far. So before I use it, I'm gonna make a trial. These are NPT, which are the plumbing threads, and they don't uh, make sense when you say, for example, this is quarter inch, and look how big it is. For obviously, the threads are not quarter inch on the outside, but they are for a fitting that has a quarter inch inner diameter. I believe that our plugs are quarter inch, but I can take one out, I have one here. Actually, they're no quarter inch, they're three eighths. I can test it. So I have this, I have this old TR3, I believe, housing that I make trials with. Yeah, it looks like our plugs are three eighths. Good, you see, I tried something else before here, but it didn't work. It needs to be three eighths NPT. So for three eighths NPT threads, they call for 3764 drill bit, which I happen to have. So let's make a trial. Not sure how that's gonna work on the housing under the car upside down, but we will see. Works pretty well here on oh, aluminum. some point it becomes pretty tight so I'm gonna stop a few threads before the end and we'll see how the plug works now let's see how deep it is gonna go oh looks like I, I was supposed to stop much earlier yeah it goes pretty deep okay so I should stop much earlier then. <sighs> I tried another hole in here. 
I, I'm gonna stop this much, this far. So let's see how this is gonna affect. Here I couldn't put my driver, so I had to use this wrench. Okay. <clears throat> that works better. So you see, that's where I'm gonna stop. Wow, that was pain in the butt to drill this hole. I went with a smaller drill bit, then bigger, then the biggest, <laughs> and then we tapped it and it worked well. And then I went inside with my magnet. Oh, come on. And then I went inside like this with my magnet and I made sure to collect all the shavings from inside because you can't just not make shavings. There was a lot inside, but I believe I took them all out. Anyways, so now I can put the plug on, put a gasket. I have to clean here a little bit. And uh, we're not gonna put just one, we're gonna put two gaskets. And then we're gonna close it, fill it up with oil, and we're done here. Okay, so we're already here with two gaskets, and I just wanted to mention that they have direction for whatever reason so if you flip them around or around they don't fit they fit only one way and on the differential just like on the gasket there's hole here i think it's only one you have two here for whatever reason i believe they're for dowels but on the cover we don't have this hole for a dowel so like you see it should be somewhere here and somewhere here but we don't have them so we just have holes on the gasket. Anyways, also the cover has direction, of course, because of the filler and this little tab here that holds the brake line that goes around. I already have a gasket maker on the diff. I have two gaskets, like I said. We have gasket maker on the cover and on each side of each gasket. So I'm just going to put two bolts through now to hold my gaskets. Maybe if they stay, I can put them all. And I'm gonna go and install it. I'm sorry I can't take you with me because it is pretty tight down there. It would have been helpful if I turned my mic on for this clip, but anyways, I was just saying that the best way to fill up a differential or transmission with oil as they are on the car is with a little pump like this, which can go directly on the oil bottle. And even if it doesn't fit on the threads for the cup, it you know, doesn't necessarily need to be closed. You can just put it on top and still pump it. And this is the oil that I'm using, MT90 by Redline. It's a GL4 oil, which is recommended for differentials. That's, that's the one that I like. I don't know how much you see, because you're literally on the floor, but that's how we're gonna fill it up. And of course we're gonna keep filling up until it starts coming out from the filling, filling hole. I believe it's somewhere around one and a half quarts, but we will see. Okay, that was a quart. Let's go get another one. There you go. So it's a little bit more than a quart. Maybe a quart and a quart of a quart. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna clean it up as much as we can so we can see if there are any leaks. It's gonna, it's gonna be easier to detect them if it is clean, right? That's it. All right, I think this is a good spot to put an end to this video so we can start a new one eventually. To be honest, I'm not really sure how much footage I have, if it is for enough for one video or it's more than one video, but we're gonna figure it out. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for commenting, subscribing and sharing and supporting. It's uh, really nice of you, but uh, stay tuned for more videos on this because we're getting really close now to starting the engine. Actually, I can pretty much start it now, but, um, but Chef Tash is really interested to be here as well to help me uh, with the initial start. And he's gonna come in two days from now. 
So I have other things to do on the car anyway, so I'm gonna do those and I'm gonna wait for him. Also the forecast for, for that date is pretty good, positive 10 Celsius, which is uh, unexpectedly high for February. So it's a good opportunity for us to start the engine at that time because we're gonna keep the door open. So anyway, stay tuned for that and uh, thanks for watching again. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.